So it's day two at the Lausitz Ring in the Brandenburg region. We're located not too far from the town of Kletwitz and this circuit built on the site of a former huge open-air coal mine. But we're surrounded by forests and woodlands. It's a very pretty part of the world here in the east of Germany. There's huge turbines in and around the circuit providing uh, eco-friendly wind power. But here on the circuit, it is all about high speeds. It's a huge arena, this. The driveway from the car park on the way into the circuit with some monuments of times gone by as you walk through and eventually get to the gates. And there you're greeted by this huge grandstand overlooking the start-finish line, which in itself can ho home 25,000 spectators. Huge place, this. 120,000 spectators when it is full, when it's able to be full. And in addition to DTM, it's hosted, of course, IndyCar in the past, which is the reason this uh, trioval circuit was built. Uh, it's hosted World Superbikes. It's even hosted the Red Bull Air Race in the past. So it's a high-speed venue, this. Top speeds that we've seen have been well over 270 kilometres an hour. So it's not a full four-corner banked oval. It's a tri-oval with eff effectively three uh, corners. And we're using two of them this weekend, effectively, especially Turn 1. This new layout that we've got for this weekend uh, has never been used before by the DTM. So instead of turning off through the infield, they'll actually take the first banked corner, the IndyCar line. It's not that banked. It's only six degrees, just under six degrees. It's bumpy. You can't quite take it flat out. You've got to be brave. And I was speaking to Marco Wittmann and Philip Ellis about the first corner yesterday and what it was uh, like. And uh, Marco Wittmann saying, you know, you've got to go in, you've got to hold the throttle, and hold your line and you cannot flinch when you're in that corner it's 300 meters long so you're in it for quite a while if the car starts to twitch you can't correct it you can't oversteer or uh, turn out of the the, uh, the slide because if you do that at those speeds the car will just snap away from you and you'll be in the wall you can't hit a bump you can't run wide onto the dusty uh, section of the circuit where all the old bits of rubber are it's too slippy and you just got to go in and Marco Wittmann said you go in you hold on you almost hold your breath and you just stay as still as you can for five or six seconds and then you breathe a sigh of relief and think, I've got through it one more time. And uh, off towards turn two, you charge. They don't break until, uh, Philip Ellis said, about the 140 metre mark. Uh, they break really late on the way into turn two, given the going over 170, nearly 175 miles an hour. And uh, then you turn off the uh, circuit into the infield. Ask Philip, what was the, uh, the, the run through turn one like at the end of the race when the tyres had uh, been uh, worn and were past their best? And the uh, one word answer he gave with a big smile on his face was sketchy. So that's something else for these drivers to consider. Uh, yesterday, the uh, bulk of the drivers came into the pits between laps nine and 12. So fairly early pit stop. We had that uh, early safety car period as well because of uh, Esme Hawkey's uh, crash. So those tyres that were put on for the start of the race won't have got much life used out of them. You only have three sets of Michelins to use throughout two free practice sessions, two qualifyings and two races. So they have to manage their tyres. They can't just put a new set on every time they go out. That helps keep the cost down and it uh, brings some strategy into play as well. But that first set of tyres that those drivers will have used will have only done between nine and 12 laps and... Uh, what was it, four or five of those laps were behind the safety car, so not really eating up the rubber. So they should have fresh tyres. I spoke to uh, the driver that did a, an alternative strategy, Nico Muller, yesterday, because he pitted on the very last lap of the race. He led for a long time, but we all knew he was going to drop down the order because of his uh, advantage was fairly slim. And uh, he said, you yeah, know, that, that was a change of strategy because he went off the road trying to attack from 16th on the grid and uh, then switch to this strategy, really just to save tyres because you have to do the mandatory stop, you have to come in. But of course, his second set of tyres did just one lap. So he's got good tyres as well for this race. But again, he's a long way down the grid. Looked a bit uh, better for him in the first part of qualifying, but ultimately everybody else got quicker in the second part and Nico didn't really. So he's 15th on the grid for this one. The driver that did come into the weekend, third in the standings, uh, Nico Muller, runner-up in the championship for the last uh, two seasons running. He said, I don't regret going for the move because I had to attack from where I was on the grid. I just regret that it didn't work out. But he said, the car is just not working for us this weekend. Cannot get the balance anywhere around the circuit. It's not one part of the course it's not working on. It's, it's everywhere. So they were going to try something radical, I think, with a setup. 
but uh, they've tried a few things and they've been chasing their tails at Team Rosberg. Issues as well for Nico's uh, teammate, Def Gore, in the number 12 sister car. So they head off then onto the formation lap. It's 55 minutes plus one lap, the scheduled race distance. Fantastic to see the grandstands with uh, some spectators in again. 10,000 capacity, uh, restricted capacity as we work our way out of this terrible worldwide pandemic. Well, the sun is shining and everybody is desperate to get out and watch some live sport, some live activity. Uh, there's been a great atmosphere uh, behind the grandstands as a walk from the paddock across the bridge, across the circuit to this side of the track to get to the commentary box. There's a real festival feel, there's music playing, there's all sorts of food stalls, merchandise in stalls, lots of people gathered enjoying themselves and having some freedom at the back of the grandstands before they went, make their way to their seats ready for this second race of the weekend. So the grid is going to shape up like this. On pole position, Philip Ellis, second, Liam Lawson, third, Max Gotts, fourth, Kelvin van der Linde. Fifth, Timo Glock. Sixth, Lucas Auer. Seventh, Sheldon van der Linde. Eighth, Daniel Hunkadea. Ninth, Arjun Mining. Tenth, Mike Rockefeller. Eleventh, Vanson Abril, who had all of his points taken away for a fuel irregularity after Monza. And so he's looking to score his first points. Twelfth, Max Buch. Thirteenth, Alex Albon. Fourteenth, Marco Wittmann. Fifteenth, Nico Muller. Sixteenth, Esteban Moot. Seventeenth, Dev Gore. And eighteenth, Leslie Hawkey. Sophia Florsch didn't put a lap in qualifying so she has to start at the back of the field in the number 99 team abd audi at the car yesterday struggling early on with fuel pressure problems so the car was being starved of fuel that was a problem that started on the formation lap apparently and she didn't get very far into yesterday's race and then the car as she went out for qualifying this morning stopped again out on track so she didn't put a, a lap in at all so the car not behaving i'm afraid for Sophia Florsch. They'll have worked really hard to try and solve the problem and hopefully from her point of view and from the team's point of view, she'll have a car which she can race now uh, for the rest of the afternoon. Getting ready then for the rolling start. Here they come, back onto the banking. Philip Lawson in the, gets, in the Winwoods number 57 blue and white Mercedes, the Red Bull liveried AF Corsa Ferrari of Liam Lawson alongside... Ready for a full 55 minutes plus one lap of racing. The red lights go out and round four of the DTM gets underway. And it's another good start for Philip Ellis. He's got his nose in front here. Liam Lawson trying to go with him, but it's going to be Ellis in the lead of the race. Gotts is just, I think, about going to hang on to third, or is he? Because he's under attack from Kelvin van der Linde around the outside as they come out of turn one. It's a good start as well for Daniel Hunkadea in the bright pink number eight Mercedes. He looks like he's gaining ground from eighth on the grid. Philip Ellis then on the way down into turn two. He's got Liam Lawson trying to come around the outside of him. Side by side for the lead of the race. Kelvin van der Linde in third, and there goes Liam Lawson down the inside into turn three. And he's got the lead of the race. Fantastic move. So the 19-year-old up to first place with a brave move that on the way into turn three set it up beautifully though didn't he on the way into turn one and there we've got max gotts coming side by side again with the uh, number four machine and he looks like he's going to sneak himself back up into third place here potentially on kelvin van der linde though kelvin digs his heels in holds the inside line and the audi just about staying ahead of the mercedes but for how long as timo glock runs out wide takes some gravel he drops down the pack a little bit max gotts is off the road he's got daniel hunkadea coming alongside him two big mercedes different teams and the drivers switch positions so max gotts who was hoping to uh, hold on to third place on this first lap of the race has actually dropped back to fifth position now so a difficult start for him. Lucas Howe has made a decent start as well. He's just behind in sixth place where he started as they come out of turn 10. And Liam Lawson gets his head down, accelerates and charges out of turn 10 to complete the first lap of the uh, race as the leader. And he's well clear of Philip Ellis in second, Kelvin van der Linde in third, Hunker Dea fourth, Gotts in fifth, Hour sixth, Sheldon van der Linde seventh, Max Puck in eighth, Marco Wittmann ninth, Arjun Mine in the points in tenth place, looking for his first championship points as well. And uh, Nico Muller trying to go on the attack as well, but he's got Alex Alban just behind him in the Ferrari there, 11th, uh, sorry, 12th and 13th. Daniel Hunker Dea holding the inside line on the way into turn two, trying to defend, but also trying to catch up to the number three car of Kelvin van der Linde as Timo Glock goes 
up the inside or tries to go up the inside of Alex Arban's Alfa Tauri Ferrari. He's also got to keep an eye on the mirrors with Esteban Moot coming through from a lowly grid position. Esteban has not been out of the top five in qualifying until this morning. But the uh, T3 Motorsport Lamborghini driver, 16th T3 Motorsport. This is their home race because the team is based in Dresden, just about 40 minutes away from here. And they'll be hoping for better luck than they had yesterday. Right, Philip Ellis, remember, with success balanced on the car, but so too is Liam Lawson. Not as heavy as the yesterday's race winner, but he's still carrying 18 kilograms. That's more weight to accelerate out of the corners, more weight to try and slow down on the brakes, more pressure on the tyres, and settles the car through the corners as well. So it does have a big effect that when you consider the tiny gaps between these drivers in terms of their lap times, every hundredth of a second can make a difference. Well, Liam Lawson was a second clear at the end of the previous lap. I think he's had another decent run here. I'll check the gap as they come through. Over the line he goes. Been caught a little bit, but not by much. He's just under nine tenths of a second clear. Alex Arben still trying to find a way past Nico Muller as they make their way through turn one. Esteban Moot has got Vance on Abril behind him as they run in 15th and 16th positions. Timo Glock having got ahead of uh, Moots into 14th place and second of the Rover Racing BMWs. It's been a change in the top 10 with Marco Wittmann through, and there is Alex Arban making his move on the inside of Nico Muller. So Alex gains a place. Esme Hawkey going wheel to wheel with Dev Gorn out, trying to get up the inside on the way out at turn three in the uh, Lamborghini. Not yet quite able to do it. Just behind our own teammate Esteban Moot. So those two Lamborghinis trying to work their way through. Seven tenths of a second, the gap. And another tenth gained back through sector one for Philip Ellis. Fantastic tracking shot, this. The camera on top of the, uh, the Land Rover, which is charging up the inner roads, following the cars. So give you this great shot and a great sense of speed as the cars make their way through the infield. And what about the second sector? Well, Liam Lawson responds, the absolute best second sector time. So he lost a tenth on the start of the lap. He's gained two tenths back, though, in the middle of the lap. So starting to just edge away from Philip Ellis. And then you've got Calvin van der Linde, Daniel Hankadea, Max Gotts fairly closely tied together just behind him. But Liam Lawson looking to control things over the line to complete another lap of the race. And the gap goes out to 1.3 seconds. Calvin van der Linde, second now, moving up to second place with a six tenths of a second advantage. And this is the charging Alex Alban, number 23. So Van der Linde has moved up ahead of Ellis. A replay of the start. Max Buch's start is apparently under investigation. And there he is, coming out wide, you see, to the left of your picture in the uh, white number 18, Team Muka Motorsport Mercedes. So his start procedure is under investigation. Did he gain a place before the start of the race? That's being looked at. That's the onboard view from Max Buch's car. And this was the moment that Liam Lawson got the lead of the race. Set it up around the outside into turn two. Then he knew he'd have the inside line for turn three. He was squeezed all the way by Philip Ellis. But this is commitment. Terrific move from Liam Lawson. On the curves, there was a bit of contact. He had to squeeze back across to avoid the tyre stack, but he made it through. And there we had Timo Glock on the first lap of the race. Four wheel drifting through the gravel and losing time and losing positions as a result of that. That's Arjun Miney with the onboard camera gaining a place after Timo ran wide. So Calvin van der Linde, the new second place car, and has already begun to pull away from Philip Ellis, who has now got Daniel Ankadea breathing down his neck. So maybe this success ballast is starting to have its effect on Philip's car. Although it doesn't seem to be affecting Liam Lawson too much. He's carrying 18 kilograms, Philip 25. But Liam Lawson going strongly. What are the lap times like, though, compared to Kelvin van der Linde? The last lap was the best lap of the race for Kelvin, a 132.9. It's only a fraction quicker than the race leader, but it was quicker. And here we see a drive-through penalty, I'm afraid, for that start line infringement for Max Boog. So he's got a drive-through penalty to take in the race. That's going to probably scupper his chances of a uh, points finish. And he might have to change his uh, tactics now. And he might well be hoping for a safety car at some point to try and get himself back in the mix. But a drive-through penalty.
for this man, Max Boog. He's been going pretty well so far in uh, the two races that he substituted for Gary Paffett uh, with the Mooka Motorsport team. There he is on track at the moment in ninth place, but he's going to pull into the pits. Miner will move up to ninth, and Alex Albon will move into tenth place. He's just got past Mike Rockefeller on the previous lap. And uh, there it goes, Daniel Hunkadea. It's going to be the first of the pit stoppers by the looks of things. Very early pit stop. As early as you can do it, because the pit window doesn't open until uh, lap five. What about this gap from first to second? Looks like it's coming down again. Absolute best second sector for Kelvin van der Linde. It's another fastest lap of the race for the championship leader. 1 minute 32.7. At that time, he was three tenths quicker than the race leader. Remember, he's got no success ballast on board. We've got a few of them coming in behind Daniel Ankader because we've also got Vance on Abril, Dev Gore and Sophia Floor, whose car, thankfully, seems to be working now. They are all coming in for very early pit stops. Although we saw the tyre degradation wasn't too bad yesterday for the drivers that had pitted after nine or 10 laps. So Daniel Hunkadea has to wait to be released. That's cost him a, a second not or two. Away. And he's not best pleased. Apologies for the colorful language. Driver frustrated that he had to wait to get out of the pits because Sophia Florsch's apt sports car was, uh, the Audi was coming in. So that will have cost him. And he'll be very frustrated indeed about that, having gone for this early stop. So the tires were holding up yesterday, but they pitted much later albeit, as I said, they had several laps behind the safety car yesterday, but certainly those tyres did seem to hold up well as Sheldon van der Linde there was in the number 31 car having a look up the inside to try and gain a position. They were there going way out wide. It was Philip Ellis. That's what cost him that second position. So he just went a little bit wide, just understeer. That might be, again, as a result of the success ballast. And that was how Kelvin van der Linde got himself through into second place and is now on this brilliant charge to try and catch his nearest championship uh, rival, Liam Lawson. If they were to finish like this, and it's a long way to go, as Philip Ellis sorry, comes sorry, in. Ellis coming in, Boot coming in, Alban and Esteban Moot at the back of the uh, fields, or the back of the picture coming in. Right, the tyres changed, it's mandatory stop. And Philip released. Beautiful roar from the Mercedes as he goes out. Has to adhere to the pit lane speed limit. And it's another good stop from the AF Corsa team, who've been demons at these changes so far. Esteban Moot comes out behind Alex Alban, a few seconds behind. Esteban Moot comes out behind Alex Alban. There's Daniel Hunkadea coming through who is, the, at the moment, the first of the pit stoppers. Max Book heading out now. Daniel Ungadea should come through in the background of the picture, up to speed. And Philip Ellis is going to come out just in front of uh, Hunkadea. Incident in turn two, under investigation. Can't give anything more specific than, uh, than that. There's no details as to which car or cars they are looking at. So there's Moot, there's Gore, both been in the pits, and there's Sophia Floor. She's also been into the pits. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars that have pitted so far, almost half the field. Uh, yes, what I was uh, going to say is that Kelvin van der Linde has now come into the pits it's from second place. Max Gotts has followed him from third, and Lucas Auer from fourth has come in as well. Arjun Miney also into the pits. So they're just coming in now. There is Arjun Miney. And at the front of your shot, Lucas Auer. The Austrian getting his tyres changed by the uh, Windward team. And number three, Kelvin van der Linde. Just gets out in front of Max Gotts. So that was an important stop from the team. They keep him in front of the Mercedes. But only just luck. That was a, a good stop and a good in-lap, I reckon, from Max Gortz in the Team HRT Mercedes. And he's poised, ready to pounce. He can't go yet. Not until they cross the white line and get on the gas again. So there's Max Book, who had this drive-through penalty coming through. And right there, Philip Ellis in the background. Daniel Hunkadea, they come out in front of him. So it is Kelvin van der Linde just in front of Max Gortz. They came out of the pits together and they've both managed to rejoin in front of Philip Ellis, who's got 
the tyres fully up to speed and temperature now. So too Daniel Hunker there. So too there is Lucas Auer coming through in the 22 car. So Liam Lawson staying out for now, and ah, oh, he comes uh, in. Miney, Bitgans, area. So he's pitted just one lap later than his championship rival. Remember, Liam Lawson was leading the race by about seven tenths of a second from Kelvin van der Linde. So that's the uh, race to keep an eye on. Got Sheldon van der Linde, Marco Bittman, and Esme Hawkey in the pits as well. Out goes the Ferrari. He stayed ahead of Sheldon van der Linde, who's only just stayed ahead. And that's Esme Hawkey coming in. She hasn't serviced the pit stop yet. Marco Wittmann is about to come out, though. He said to me yesterday, we've got to work on the qualifying setup. The car's OK in the race, but we can't get it working at the moment in qualifying. Right, wait, wait, wait to get on the throttle for Liam Lawson. It's a painful wait for you to get to that white line. And uh, here they all come. This is going to be tight as he comes out of the pits. Is he going to retain the virtual race lead? I think he might just, but it's going to be oh so tight between him and Calvin van der Linde. Van der Linde already up to speed, remember. Here they go side by side. And he's also got Max Gotts behind him as well. Van der Linde's there. Gotts has gone through as well. Liam Lawson still getting his tyres up to temp. Tucks in right behind them, but he has slightly fresher tyres than the two drivers that have just got past him. He's got to keep Philippe Ellis behind him now, though. That's going to be quite the task. Philippe in the Mercedes pushing on as they go through the uh, left-hander at turn four onto this uh, back straight then, leading up towards the right-hand sweeping wide hairpin at turn five, and then down another straight which runs parallel to the first infield straight. Five, and then down another straight which runs parallel to the first infield straight. Lim, he hasn't pitted yet, nor has Timo Glock, nor has Nico Muller. Max Book came into the pits. He's had that... Uh, drive-through penalty for incorrect grid position. Calvin van der Linde, the leading pit stopper, is out ahead of Gotts, ahead of Lawson, and ahead of Ellis, who should be a net fourth once uh, everything works itself out. So really good pit stop phase, that, for the team Ab Sports line for Calvin van der Linde from being a few tenths behind. He's up, he's ahead, and he's also got one car in between himself and Liam Lawson. If Liam were to win the race with Kelvin second, they'd be absolutely exactly tied on championship points because it's 25 for a win and 18 for second, seven the difference, and Lawson seven behind at the moment. But as it stands, he's got to overtake Matt Scotts and he's got to overtake Kelvin van der Linde for that to happen. Plenty of time to go, though, just under 40 minutes of the race still remaining. We've had fairly early pit stops once again, even earlier than yesterday. So there you can see the drivers that have yet to pit. Number nine, Mike Rockefeller. He's also got success ballast on the car, 15 kilograms after finishing with his first podium of the uh, season yesterday. Saying that he could hold on to the top two, hold on to the Mercedes and the Ferrari, but he couldn't race with them. But he had worked very hard on getting to grips with this car. And you come out to these types of GT3 cars and therefore having I mean, to get used to uh, the nuances of it and, worked very hard to get a good qualifying uh, result, which he certainly did do yesterday. Very nearly got pole position. Right, on board with Liam Lawson. What can he do from here? He's seventh at the moment, but you've got to remember the top four. They've all got to make uh, other pit stops. Daniel Ankadea. What did that pause as he came out of the pits cost him? Because he's not very far behind uh, Lawson and Ellis. Might he have been in front of them? Had he not had to wait for the Sophia Florsch Audi to come in. Bit unlucky that, but uh, well, so he goes. And Matt Scott's having been right underneath the rear wing of Calvin van der Linde as they came out of the pits. It started to just fall away from him now. So the last lap, Calvin did a 132.1, a 132.2 for Gotts, which was a personal best. 132.2 for Lawson as well, also a personal best. 132.7 for Ellis. So he's the one in the lead group falling back. Hunker Dare is on the same sort of pace as him. 132.7. So about half a second away from the pace of van der Linde, Gutz and Lawson. So those three are starting to break away. Second and third on the track at the moment. Yet to make their pit stops are this pair. Number 16, Timo Glock. And number 51, Nico Muller. 
and Nico, the quicker of the two at the moment. Philip Ellis said to me yesterday, the one car you don't want to follow is a BMW because they're so big and wide, they're really, really difficult to get past. And uh, we've seen Timo being not the easiest driver to overtake already this weekend. Is it Liam? I think Liam Lawson was uh, stuck behind him for a little bit in yesterday's race. And it looks like Nico Muller can't get close enough to attack here as yet on the, uh, the banking. Maybe I'll have a go with the get down to turn two, but he needs to be a bit closer through turn one. Great speed, great shot that as they whiz past the concrete wall. And turn off now through turn two, through turn three. It's Peter Mooka to the uh, left of the picture, the Boston Mooka Motorsport. Winning his uh, driver on as we see number three, Kelvin van der Linde continuing to push on. Last lap for Kelvin was another decent one, 132.3. And he's getting onto the tail now of Max Book, who's uh, been into the pits uh, once. To serve this uh, drive through penalty that he had for the uh, start line incident. And he's much quicker. I want to get past the Mercedes ASAP, having just put a bit of a gap between himself and Matt Scott. So these two are fourth and fifth at the moment. But with others ahead to make their pit stops. And you can see, see Calvin van der Linde much better on the brakes in the Audi. He's able to take a tighter line. Out wide goes the Mercedes. Onto the grass with two wheels for Max Book. And Kelvin van der Linde will, will be through. Can Matt Scott get through as well? He's certainly got a try here. And Max through around the outside on the other Max. Book didn't make life too difficult for him, knowing that he's not really involved in this scrap. So Liam Lawson now needs to get past the Mercedes without being held up to try and get back onto the tail of the two ahead. We'll have to wait here, though, through this twisty section. <laughs> or oh, Willie, he has to look anyway. I don't think I've ever seen anybody overtake at that corner, but Liam Lawson had half a go, just showing his nose. And now accelerating out. He'll have to wait now until he gets down to turn two. Replay of Max Book running out wide. Coming out of turn five, seen a few do that. Timo Glock doing it early on in the race. That's the one that's been catching them out. That's what a few do that. Timo Glock doing it early on in the race. That's the one that's been catching them out. That's what it... It's a fairly hefty drop-off from the kerb down to the gravel there. So a bumpy ride, then you thump over the grass and eventually get through um, onto the track and Lawson's got through. So again, I think Max Book not fighting too hard, knowing that he's not really involved in the lead battle. That was important for Lawson to get through as soon as he could. Rockefeller, Glock and Muller staying out. Their first, second and third, but yet to make their mandatory pit stop. Got Kelvin van der Linde fourth now. Leading pit stopper Max Gotts in fifth and Liam Lawson in sixth. They've all three of them already got their pit stops out of the way. And there, Max Book sensibly staying out of the fight, letting Philip Ellis through as well. It looks like he might be struggling to get another podium today, but if he can get more good points with a heavy car, I'll be pleased about that. And Max Book just sensibly staying out of the way here. And look at this. Nico Muller has finally got alongside Timo Glock. Bit of paint swapping as they went side by side there. They're still side by side on the way through the banking. Who's going to be the bravest here? Out they come. 270 kilometres an hour. Still almost swapping wing mirrors. The pair of them. Muller's got the inside line. Glock has got his nose in front. Down towards the 150 metre board on the brakes. And Nico Muller should just go through. He slows the car down enough to make turn two. Back all over him through turn three is Timo Glock. But the Audi ahead of the BMW runs a little bit wide through turn four. And you can see the size difference there between the two cars, but the BMW will have to sit behind now. So Nico Muller up to second, important move. His car obviously handling a little bit better now, but is this different strategy of running late into the race going to work for him? It's not about saving tyres anymore. It was the last race of the weekend and he's got to make sure he gives himself enough time to use those fresh tyres at the end of the race as well. There's a replay then. This was great duelling between two really at the end of the race as well. There's a replay then. This was great duelling. Gave each other just enough room. He could have just about got a piece of paper between them to start with and then they actually made contact. Very hairy stuff. Timo Glock wasn't going to make that easy, was he? But Muller eventually getting through. Great battle. Right, so they're effectively your virtual top three, top four, top five coming through, because they've all got past Max Book now. So Rockenfeller 
Muller and Glock are the top three. They've got to make their pit stops. They're about 25, 26 seconds ahead, which is not enough. It needs to be more like 40 seconds, 45 seconds ahead, because this long, long run down the uh, pit lane that you have here at the Lazitz Ring. So when the pit stops sort themselves out, it should be Kelvin van der Linde in the lead. He's fourth at the moment. Gotts will pick up second. Lawson will pick up third. Ellis fourth. Hunkadeo fifth. And Sheldon van der Linde uh, sixth. That's how it should be. Should be once the pit stops sort themselves out. We've still got... More than half the race to go, though. 32 minutes and 20 seconds, plus one lap left on the clock. Track temperature just over 41 degrees. Philip Ellis just about fending off Daniel Hunkadero. I think Sheldon van der Linde is the one to watch in that group, though. In the Rover Racing BMW, pulls out of the slipstream. Is he going to have a go to dive down the inside of Hunkadero? He thought about it, but he wasn't quite close enough. The th through turns two and three, they go. The Rover Racing BMW of... Sheldon van der Linde was on the podium here last year, looking strong at this phase of the race. And there's big brother Kelvin running in, full, looking strong at this phase of the race. How far clear is he of Max Gotts? The answer is just over a second. Max took back a few hundreds of a second on that previous run through, but not very much at all. Barely anything between them. And Sheldon van der Linde still trying to find a way past the number eight Mercedes of Daniel Hunkadea. Sheldon has got the better handling car at the moment. He's got the quicker car, but finding a way through in the infield is not easy. Has a little lunge on through turn nine. Got clock in the pits, his teammate. Not easy. Has a little... And... The rest of them are just coming over the start line now. Calvin van der Linde, Max Gotts, Liam Lawson and company. So he's probably going to drop drop in somewhere just outside the top ten, I think. Still got a long way to go before he gets back on track, Timo Glock. It's such a long pit lane exit. But he'll have fresher tyres and he might be able to go on the attack. Somebody doing just that is Sheldon van der Linde. So Rockefeller stayed out, Muller has stayed out. They're the top two. Kelvin van der Linde now up to third place. And this is how close it got in that battle. The onboard camera showing Sheldon van der Linde almost making contact with the back of the Mercedes there. Maybe he did, actually. Slight bit of contact, just showing his nose. It's quite hard to get through there, though, and you don't want to get off the throttle because then that kills your acceleration all the way on that high-speed run through turns one and down toward turn two, where you can overtake. So it's maybe better to sit back, have a bit of a run through there and uh, try and make the move at turn two. Easier said than done. But Sheldon just getting a bit frustrated at the moment in the Rover Racing BMW because there's no way past the, the man from Barcelona, Daniel Hunkadea fending him off for now. Philip Ellis has just begun to edge away from them in the 57 uh, Mercedes, and that's probably because they're holding each other up a little bit in their own battle. So it's good news for Philip at the moment, who's a net fourth. But uh, only about a second or so behind third place. Right, tyres being readied. Now, who is that for? Liam Lawson, looking good, in control at the moment. Kelvin van der Linde there, then Max Gotts, and then it's Liam Lawson. And Sheldon van der Linde almost onto the tail that time of Daniel Hunkadea. But Daniel, Daniel's breaking really late into turn two, making life very hard for Sheldon to get past. No doubt about it, Sheldon's the quicker of the two at the moment, but Hunkadea using all of his experience, the ex-Formula 3 European champion too. Uh, keep the BMW at bay, not making any mistakes, not leaving any opportunities. Great defensive driving. He's got a bit deep, though, into the right-hander at turn five. Car hopping and skipping about on the bumps of the Lazitz ring. Tidy enough on the exit, though. Sheldon tempted into another move. Yes, looks at the inside. No, door closes again. Keeps on showing his nose just to try and put Hankadea off his line. Through turn seven and eight they go, up to turn nine, then through turn 10, back onto the banking to round out another lap. 
Just got to sit tight here and now try and accelerate quicker. And just got to sit tight here and now try and accelerate quicker. Oh. Keep an eye on the mirrors as well because Lucas Auer is looking fairly ominous in his Mercedes. Kelvin van der Linde has just done a 133.0, two tenths quicker than Max Gotts. Yeah. He's done a 133.2, 133.2 for Lawson as well, so that gap stays the same. And also on a 133.2, Philip Ellis, who's had a bit of pace now, a bit of speed. Lucas Auer is uh, the quickest driver on track at the moment, 133.1 for him, which is why he's getting onto the tail of this battle. On board with Sheldon van der Linde, currently battling with Daniel Hunkadea for seventh place. But it's a net fifth once the pit stops happen, and Ankadea finally goes wide. He's got to take the chance now, Sheldon van der Linde. He doesn't need to be asked twice, and through he goes. Can he get the line, though, on the way into the right-hander? Hunkadea knows it's a right-hander coming up. He's a bit further back. Is he going to lunge back up the inside? Of course he is. He's going to have a go anyway. Still side by side. As they turn back, is he going to lunge back up the inside? Of course he is. He's going to have a go anyway. Still side by side. Okay, Wittmann coming after them as well. Great tracking shot, this, but it looks like Sheldon van der Linde has just done enough to edge clear of Daniel Hunkadea. Great battle between the pair of them for four or five laps, but eventually van der Linde gets through, as he needed to do, really, because... Van der Linde gets through, as he needed to do, really, because now he's got a Daniel Hunkadea. Daniel closing the door now on Lucas Auer, as I say, he's been quickest driver out there. And Marco Wittmann has joined the party. He's right onto the tail of the group here, always fighting, never giving up. Marco Wittmann, the 2014-2016 champion, the man from the south of Germany. Looking like he's going to be in the points again today. Still got 26 minutes to go. It's a terrific racing so far here at the Lausitz Ring. And this one's been highly entertaining as well. Mike Rockefeller leads in the Audis, 3.2 seconds clear of Nico Muller. Nico's just done his personal best lap, though, a 133.2. And that was half a second quicker than Rockefeller. They've both got to make their pit stop still. So they are going to drop down the order as Lucas Auer gets Marco Wittmann coming alongside him now. Surely he's not going to go around the outside. He might do. That'll give him the inside. Liam Lawson-like on the way to turn three. And it's almost a carbon copy of the move that we saw at the start of the race for the lead. But this time it's Marco Wittmann on Lucas Auer. The German ahead of the... ...move that we saw at the start of the race for the lead. But this time it's Marco Wittmann on Lucas Auer. ...move that. Set it up nicely. So Lucas Auer has got sort of balked by that battle that was happening, happening ahead of him. Ends up losing a place. Here's a replay. That was a sweet move from Marco. Through he went. And as ever a fair driver, Lucas Auer gave him the room on the way into turn three. So more good overtaking. That's a replay of Shelton van der Linde's move on Daniel Hunkadea. That was just as Danny just twitched there under braking, just understeered through the corner. And the door eventually opened up for Sheldon. There's your race leader for now. Lights ablaze for number nine, the 2013 champion, Mike Rockefeller for Team Ab Sports Line. 2.8 seconds clear for number nine, the 2013 champion, Nico Muller, is coming after him at a fair old rate of knots now. I think he's struggling on the tyres, Mike Rockefeller. And yeah, that would suggest that he might be coming in on the next lap because he's lost a second over the last two laps to Nico Muller. He's got the gap down to 2.8 seconds. Muller who's demonstrated already once this weekend that he's able to nurse the tyres and avoid too much tyre degradation. He's uh, lapping quickly. He's, remember, he's got pretty old tyres. He's just done a 133.3, but the likes of van der Linde and Gotts are only a couple of tenths quicker than him. And that's on pretty old tyres now for Nico Muller, so more excellent driving from the Swiss. A couple of tenths quicker than him. And that's on first sector. He gained another three tenths on Rockefeller and another tenth or tenth and a half through the middle sector. So unsurprisingly, Mike Rockefeller turns left and heads for the pits. So Nico Muller is going to stay out. He's going to pick up the lead of the race for now in the 51 for the pits. So Nico Muller will go and expect some fireworks in the last 20 minutes or so from Mike Rockefeller once he's got these fresh tyres on. We know he's quick here, having finished third yesterday. So Rockefeller making his way down this very, very, very long pit lane. That pit lane speed limit to them will feel like two miles an hour, I think. It's 50 kilometres an hour, the pit lane speed limit. We're used to doing 270 kilometres an hour. It'll feel absolutely pedestrian. Good stop. And Kelvin is leading the race. Kelvin is leading. So Rockefeller going back out. 
One up sports line, Audi comes in, and that gives the lead back to another yeah. because Calvin van der Linde now picks up the lead of the race. And Mike Rockefeller waits and waits and waits, going to rejoin behind Vance on Abril, so he'll be 13th, I think. So he's got a good chance of some points still. Yeah, there he is, tucking in just ahead of uh, Esteban Moot, between Abril and Esteban Moot. So just outside the points. Replay of Esme Hawkey getting busy and firing down the inside of Dev Gore. Good move that from Esme. XW Series uh, racer from a couple of years ago. And that year she combined W Series Single Seater International Championship with the first season of the Porsche Carrera Cup. Last year, taking the Pro-Am category with a terrific season, supporting the British Touring Car Championship. Before that, she raced Porsche Caymans in GT Cup, so already building up a good amount of experience. Younger brother, Ethan, a very good racer as well. We come up through Ginetta Juniors in the last couple of years. He's racing now Porsches as well in the UK, racing in Porsche Caymans, and successfully so. He's one of the championship frontrunners. So Esme Orki having a much better day than uh, yesterday. That good move on Dev Gore, the American who struggled a bit here this weekend on his first visit to the Lazarus Ring. Well, first visit, to my knowledge at least, for the American to the Lazarus Ring. The car has generally been struggling though, hasn't it? With Nico Muller having his woes as well for Team Rosberg. So there is the number four, Max Gott's car. Number three, Calvin van der Linde. The only driver ahead of him that has already made a pit stop. Muller leads, 22 seconds clear, but he's got to make this pit stop. And he's going to drop back probably just outside the top 10 once he comes in. But when is Nico going to come in? He's got to use the tyres to his advantage. He's got to be able to use those new tyres to make some positions back up. He's got to give himself enough time to do that as well. There's no use doing it on the last lap, really. So... How far is he clear of 10th place? Arjun Miney is 10th at the moment, 34 seconds behind. So, yeah, I think he'll rejoin. Well, Rockefeller's 13th. He'll probably be looking at rejoining in, in about 13th, 12th, 13th, 14th place, something like that, when he does finally make his pit stop. Right, on board with Arjun Miney, looking for his first points finish in the DTM. Been really quick all weekend long. Troubles at the start of the race yesterday. But he's been qualifying really well, and the 23-year-old... Bangalore has now got the Thai British driver, ex Formula One racer Alex Alban breathing down his neck. Alex has been amassing plenty of points in the races. Remember, he's getting used to GT cars. He's never driven these type cars before. Nothing with a roof on, really. He's, even though his dad, Nigel, was a very successful touring car racer and Porsche Carrera racer, it's always been single seaters so far in the career for Alex Alban. So he's getting used to these types of cars. Hasn't qualified always that well, but he's raced very well so far third place in race one after being promoted up onto the podium from way down the grid and he's had third as one after being promoted up onto the podium from battling to get himself in the points at the moment though he should be in the points once Nico Muller makes his pit stop so these two are 10th and 11th but they should be 9th and 10th once Muller comes in the uh, Alfa Tauri backed A of Corsa Ferrari looks a little bit quicker than the get speed Mercedes at the moment so, everybody watching on with 19 minutes to go. Kelvin van der Linde, 1.6 seconds clear now of Max Gotts. Max took a little bit of time out of him through the first sector and another half a tenth through the second sector. So, we'll keep an eye on that gap, which is just started to come down a bit. But Alex Alban trying to find his way past Arjun Miney now. Here's the rear facing camera and good exit speed here for the Mercedes. So, the Ferrari drops back again. Alex coming back at him, under braking though. Closing back up to the Mercedes, trying to slingshot down the inside, halfway alongside. Is there going to be contact? Likely, yes. But Archer just holds his line, holds his nerve, and stays ahead as they come through turn 10. But that was uh, a bit, that was a karting type lunge, that from Alex, but it almost worked. Saw Liam Lawson trying a similar move early on. The Ferrari obviously very quick through that last sector. Now he'll have to sit tight through turn one. He's able to take a slightly lower, tighter line to the curves. Closing, closing, closing now as they head down towards the braking zone for turn two. 
Alex, I reckon he's going to have a go here. Arjun knows what's coming, so he holds the inside line. But the Mercedes on the racing line, makes it as wide as he can. But look at that Ferrari coming down the inside. Alex Albert surely is going to get through. Down he goes under braking on the way to turn two. He covers it off through turn three. And he's got through. So Alex Albert ahead of Arjun Mining. Arjun coming back at him on the way through turn four. But the Ferrari is through. Nice move, that, from quite a long way back. Brave stuff from Alex. Here's a replay. He got the toe, of course. A big toe you give down this straight. Long way back, brave. And then he breaks oh so late into the corner. I think the most impressive part was the fact that he got round the corner when he broke that late, but he did. And you can see Arjun fighting the wheel because he breaks at the last possible millisecond as well. So another great duel. Fantastic race we've had so far this season. Um, I'm loving the new DTM era. It's given us plenty of entertainment. Yeah, what's Nico Muller's times are starting to go off the ball now. One minute 33.9. So I thought soon he's going to make that pit stop call. Meanwhile, this is Vance on Abril in the yellow uh, HRT Mercedes. 12th, Mike Rockefeller, who's on pretty fresh tyres. 13th, trying to come through, trying to get himself up in the points. Thomas Beermeyer from Abbott Sports Line, the team principal. His man, Mike Rockenfeller, trying to get in the points. His other man, Kelvin van der Linde, looking like he might just get the win. Might. Long way to go still. Right, Vance Abril has got the Mercedes lights ablaze underneath his rear wing. And this is where... Mike Rockefeller has got to try and get through. He can't into turn two. So he's probably going to have to wait now until he gets to the end of the lap. Or is he? No, he's not, because there is the opportunity. There is the gap. The Audi draws alongside. And on the outside line, he's going to have to cover it off on the way into the right-hander at turn five, but he's done so, and that's why the man has been a champion in the DTM. <laughs> All right, Nico Muller has come into the pits, so the race leader in. See him underneath the commentary box. He's probably going to come out in something like around about 12th place, but it'll be fireworks after that. Car does seem to be running better today. Damage limitation, really. If he can walk away with a few points at least, it'll cheer him up after yesterday's disappointments, but tough weekend for him. We're hoping that the car is more reactive to the Zolder circuit. All right. Well, more reactive to the Zolder circuit, right? Okay. Well, right, that's Alex Alban and Arjun Mindy coming through. So he's going to be out of the points here. Not be too far out of the points. That's Rocky coming through as well, and Abril, and Moot. Guy's got to sit and watch them all come past. Right, finally he can pull the trigger and uh, head out, and he's going to rejoin just in front of Timo Glock. So 14th, I think. Or is he? No, just behind him, actually. Can't get out in front of Glock either, so... That's not worked out really that well, has it, for Nico Muller. And uh, Buka's come into the pits as well to make his uh, stop. I think uh, already been in to serve his drive-through penalties, now made his mandatory pit stop on the tyre change. So Maximilian Book rejoining as our last pit stopper. Everybody's been in now. This is, of course, his second visit to the pits. And he's got, look how long you have to wait <laughs> to pull the trigger. It's agony, agony for the drivers. But there you go. It is what it is for them. So, Kelvin van der Linde will inherit the lead of the race. Back to where he uh, was before it all happened. Well, effectively, anyway, Liam Lawson was in front of him before the pit stops. But 1.8 seconds clear now of Max Gotts. Max, in turn, is about the same distance clear of Liam Lawson. Philip Ellis is hanging on to Liam Lawson, but he's about a second behind. Sheldon van der Linde is maybe the one to keep an eye on now. Yeah, it was three tenths quicker than Philip Ellis last time around. So Sheldon van der Linde in fifth place, looking good, closing up the gap. Oh, 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 what's that? Number three, Kelvin van der Linde, slow, dropping back. What's happened? He's got an issue. What's the issue? He's already lost the lead of the race to Max Gotts. He's got Liam Lawson, his championship rival, past him. And the car's still not working. The car switched off, man. Puppy. 
the bleep 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 car switched off. Oh dear. Again, apologies for the uh, feisty language, but understandable, I guess, when you've just seen the lead of the race snatched away from you. So it's back up to speed now, I think. The car just switched off, he said. There you go, yeah. Bet Max Gotts couldn't believe his luck. He just drove past. Liam Lawson getting through as well. Well, that's a huge worry. Lost all speed, all drive, but it has got going again now. Just be hoping it doesn't happen again. So that has given the lead to Max Gotts and it has given us the top two of the championship running together. How about this? Liam Lawson, second in the championship, second in the race now, and you're on board with Calvin van der Linde, the championship leader. So if it stays like this, second place and Liam Lawson, that is going to be 18 points. Third place, 15 points for Calvin van der Linde. The gap between them coming into this race was seven points, so it's going to come down to four points, the gap in the championship. That's not very much at all. I mean, you don't need to be a great mathematician to work that out. So it's been uh, all in all, if it stays like this, a very good weekend for Liam Lawson, even if he doesn't walk away with a race win. And there'll be three podiums out of four as well. Only missing out on a podium potentially at Monza, or at least a good result at Monza after the contact he had with Esteban Moots fairly early on in the race. This is the battle for fourth place between Philip Ellis in the uh, blue and white team win with Mercedes and a Rover Racing BMW. Rover Racing, which started out as a, as a one-man race team, or one-man band officially, but has uh, grown and grown over the years. Michael Zaya founded it back in 1995, the original company, and it became a race team. These days, it has uh, more than 300 employees. Runs it with his daughter, Alexandra Coleman and Hans-Peter Nandorf, the team principal. Right, look at this. <laughs> Nose to tail between the top two in the championship. Kelvin van der Linde has got the bit between his teeth. He's been a bit wound up by the technical glitch that uh, cost him the race lead and dropped him down to third place. He doesn't want to lose any points to Liam Lawson. I think he recognises that he's a big, big championship rival for him. And now he's trying to get his way back ahead. We've also got another van der Linde on the attack because Sheldon is all over the back of Philip Ellis in the battle for fourth place. Right, out of turn one they come, down towards turn two, just over 10 minutes plus one lap to go. And it's all, uh, all fireworks now in this race. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, all together, all in the same shot. The race leader, though, he's gone. Max got 3.8 seconds clear. Never been a race winner in the DTM. He's looking for his maiden victory. And he'll continue, if it stays like this, the trend of different race winners in every race of the 2021 season. He was looking really relaxed and calm and upbeat and positive at the start of the race on the grid when Verena interviewed him. And he's certainly carried that spirit through. A likeable German in the lead of the race. He'll know he's been a bit lucky about it, though, because of Calvin van der Linde's technical issue. But van der Linde now trying to find his way back through. He goes right, he goes left, he goes left again. Looks down the inside. Oh, it's tight. Is it going to be contact? Not quite. But this is great racing. Liam Lawson holding his line in the Ferrari. Calvin van der Linde is throwing the kitchen sink at him. And the 19-year-old now coming under attack on the grass goes Calvin van der Linde to try and create a gap. He's on the outside. He kicks up the dust. Liam Lawson's not having any of this. He puts his elbows out, stands tall and holds on to second place. And Calvin van der Linde is throwing everything at this. Surely this is going to bring Ellis and Sheldon van der Linde back closer to them. Yes, it is. And also Hunkerdeer and Wittmann and Auer getting closer to them as well. So huge, huge scrap here with just under nine minutes to go. How many of these battles are we going to have this year? Lawson and van der Linde. Right, great battle. Uh, the battle which came about because of that technical issue at Fort Calvin van der Linde a few laps ago. Let's see if we can find out what the cause of that was. And I'm here with Thomas uh, Biermeier from Sports Upline. And um, Sports Upline, sorry. Uh, Thomas, how exactly...
exactly can that happen and what exactly happened to Calvin? I mean, it's a big shame leading the race and then all of a sudden so something switching off. What happened? The, the car switched off. We don't know why this happened. We don't know. He did a completely reset at the back straight and now the car is going again. So we don't know exactly what happened. But obviously Calvin is a fighter and it's very exciting at the moment because hopefully he can go to the front, right? This is the reason why I'm watching because we are, we are fighting for position now and I think he will overtake him, hopefully, yes. All right, crossing thank our you. fingers, Thomas. thank you so much. Back to you. Fair play to Thomas. He's trying to watch the screen and do an interview at the same time. He can't, like the rest of us, take his eyes off it. But thanks, Farida, for the uh, the update. That's Thomas Beermeyer, uh, boss of uh, Ab Sports Line. They don't know what caused that glitch, the car switching off. But here we've got his terrific battle for second place. Now, while we heard uh, from Thomas, we saw uh, Marco Wittmann getting ahead of Daniel Hunkadea. So Wittmann... He's got ahead of Auer and he's got ahead of Hunger Dare. He's now up to sixth place. A great, another great gritty performance from the uh, the German. <laughs> Team radio from Lucas Auer, but not all that clear. Lucas trying as well to get past Hunger Dare after the Spaniard was put on the back foot by that overtake from Wittmann, but he didn't quite get through. So Wittmann sixth, Hunger Dare seventh, Auer eighth, Albert ninth, Rockefeller back into the points in tenth, Nico Muller's twelfth. Trying to find a way past Arjun Miney next. And there's Philip Ellis taking a defensive line on the way to turn two to try and keep Sheldon van der Linde behind him. The car dances around, though. He's struggling for grip. Sheldon van der Linde of the BMW is all over him. Tires screeching and squealing, and he gets on the gas now. The tires protesting in agony. He's forcing it through here, trying to get around the outside. He's got to go around the outside now. He's committed to the move. But he's got to keep an eye on the mirrors because Marco Wittmann is there to steal his own position if he's not careful. Can't get through there. Switches back to the inside on the way out of turn five. Philip Ellis keeps him behind for now. Dot, dot, dot. But there's more to come, I suspect. Liam Lawson is still... Fe dot, dot, dot. But there's more to come, I suspect. Liam Lawson is still fending off Calvin van der Linde for second place as they run der Linde in fifth place. And in sixth place, Marco Wittmann. He's bringing Hankadeer and Auer with him as well. What a great battle this is. Dare I say, best race of the season so far. We've had some absolute crackers already. Six minutes to go. Stop the clock. We want to keep this going. It's brilliant. Not having any fun, really, although I'm sure he is, is uh, Max Gotts, because he's just driving around on his own at the moment in the lead of the race. He won't care about that. He'll care about the clock running down as quickly as it can for him to get this maiden race victory. But all the fun and games are happening behind. Sheldon van der Linde, you suspect, has not yet given up on that second place. The body language of the car tells you everything you need to know about how determined he is to get past Liam Lawson. But Liam, cool as you like, fended him off. When he was left, he was right, he was on the grass, he was on the curbs, but he wouldn't let him pass. Shelton van der Linde having this very, very good battle with Philip Ellis. Good, clean racing from the pair of them. These two young charges. The former Audi TT Cup champion and yesterday's race winner, Philip Ellis, doing another fine job here. Remember, he's a key championship contender now as well, up to third in the standings after yesterday's win and this morning's pole position. And with the 25 kilograms of success ballast on board, he's doing a really good job in fourth place. It was fourth yesterday for the driver with the heaviest car, Kelvin van der Linde, although he was only about eight, nine tenths of a second away from a podium in the end. But it does have that sort of effect as Kelvin van der Linde feigns a look down the inside, just showing his nose, just trying to unsettle the Ferrari ahead up towards the right hand at turn seven they go. Slowing the car down for turn eight. Left hand at turn nine coming up. Right rear puncture for Esteban Moot. The Lamborghini. Try to go offline and try to go very, very slow to back to the box as you're close to the box. I'm not sure he's going to make it back to the box, is he? Back to the pits. Oh dear, poor mm. Esteban Moot not having much luck at all this weekend. T3 Motorsport. So he retires from the race as Max Gotts continues to pull away from the huge battle that's going on behind. He's 5.6 seconds clear now. Mert getting out of the way, but Moot's trying to get uh, back to the pits if he can. Liam Lawson has also got a heavy car, remember? 18 kilograms on board the Ferrari. Still doing a good job here to keep Calvin van der Linde behind him. Which one of the van der Linders is going to make the move first then? Is it going to be Calvin for second or Sheldon for fourth place? Both been frustrated, especially, I guess, Sheldon. He's been there a long time now behind Philip Ellis in the Mercedes. And well done to Esteban Mood, the Belgian driver, the 19-year-old has 
very sensibly and cautiously got the car back to the pits. So that one negates any kind of worries about a safety car. Got Argemini 11th with uh, Nico Muller on his tail now, just two tenths between them. That's the battle for 11th place. But uh, then as a uh, another eight tenths up the road to get into the points for Nico Muller. Holding on to the final championship point currently in 10th place is the teammate to Liam Lawson, who you're looking at here, Alex Alban in 10th place. Three minutes plus one lap to go. The longer you sit behind a driver, the harder it gets to get past them because they know what's coming. They know where to defend, where to put the car, where you're a little bit stronger. And the element of surprise starts to go when you're the driver on the attack. And I think that's been the case here for Liam Lawson and Philip Ellis. They've been able to work out where best to defend the longer these battles have gone on. Lucas Auer getting very close to the tail of Daniel Hungerdeer and Mike Rockefeller coming after the pair of them. Remember, he's got much fresher tyres. And uh, he was nine tenths of a second quicker on the previous lap. So Mike Rockefeller is probably on for a late charge here, I suspect. Lights ablaze for him. Daniel Hungerdeer taking the inside line. Lucas Auer trying to get through. Can't. Hunkadea holds on to seventh, and Mike Rockefeller gets himself onto the back of them now. These fresher tyres in ninth place. Surely, when he's eight, nine tenths of a second a lap quicker, he's going to be able to come through and at least pick up a few more points and places. Good drive this from uh, Rocky, making the strategy work. Much lower rate of attrition today as well. We had uh, was it half a dozen cars didn't finish yesterday, but Esteban Moot, the first retiree from the race. Good to see Sophia Florsch's car working now, as well as Nico Muller has uh, found his way past Argemini and now about to find his way past Alex Alban. Through he goes, and that's into the points for Nico. He needed that. He's giving it full aggression, and it's only going to be for a point or two, but he's done it as Sheldon van der Linde almost pushes the Mercedes through turn 10. But still, Philip Ellis stands tall, stands strong, stays in front. Minute and 17 seconds left on the clock, accelerating out now. And Kelvin van der Linde's got a bit closer to the tail of Liam Lawson as well through the final sector. So they go through this battle for second, not quite, but almost nose to tail, final sector. So they go through this battle of Kelvin is free to go on the attack now. He hasn't got to worry about defending from Philip Ellis. Not that we really ever had to do that. And Mike Rockefeller's still at the back of the queue in ninth place, still hasn't found a way through. Muller trying to catch up after them as well. Holding that line again on the way into the turn in fourth place is Philip Ellis. Through. Mike Mercedes staying ahead of Sheldon van der Linde's yellow and white. Number 31 BMW. This is on board with Sheldon coming out at turn four. Heading on to that first midfield straight. Race leader through. Second Lawson. Third Kelvin van der Linde. Fourth, but with the car more, but with the car more and more understeery. The Mercedes is Philip Ellis. Struggling to get it turned in now. The car's getting wider and wider, so being left open. And surely Sheldon van der Linde is going to be tempted to go for one of those. He said, this is our best chance of getting a win here this weekend. Knew the car would be well suited to the Lazitz ring, but that's quite worked out for him. And look at this, Kelvin van der Linde has got himself right underneath the rear wing of Liam Lawson now. There's Max Gotts coming out of the final turn with a 5.2 second lead, just bringing the car home now. And Max Gotts on last course lap. Bring it home. Last lap. for last a lap first safety. win of the DTM. Just bring it home, says the engineer, which he is. He's on the last lap of the race now, Max Gotts. And here comes Kelvin van der Linde. First win of the DTM. Just turn one, he was never trying to overtake there, just trying to unsettle Liam Lawson. But Liam is not to be budged from second place. <laughs> Sheldon van der Linde still trying to find a way past Philip Ellis. Also keeping an eye on the mirrors with Marco Wittmann's BMW getting ever bigger. And here we go on the brakes. Liam Lawson safe for now. Gets through turn two, through turn three. Sheldon van der Linde all over Philip Ellis. Like an angry rash, but he just cannot find his way past. Great defensive through turn three. Sheldon van der Linde all over Philip Ellis. Like an angry rash, but he just cannot find his way past. Great defensive driving from Ellis. He's not over-defended, he's not blocked, he's not weaved. He just hasn't made any mistakes. He's been under huge, huge pressure all the way through. And you can say the same of Liam Lawson in the second half of the race. 
Calvin van der Linde. You'll see this is the win that got away after that glitch. Car just randomly switching itself off on the way out of turn one, dropping in from first to third. When it looked like the win might be uh, a distinct possibility. Instead, though, it's going to be Max Scotts that will pick up his first ever win in the DTM. This is third seat. It's going to be Max Scotts that will pick up his first ever win in the DTM. This is his third season of uh, DTM. And he's just bringing the car home now. It's going to be an absolutely delighted Max Scotts, a delighted team HRT. Out of the final corner, he now comes. He roars for the line. He flashes the lights. And Max Scotts wins in the DTM Great, for the first see. time. Really, really well. Well done, well done. Nice race. Great job. Lawson second, Calvin van der Linde third, Ellis fourth, Sheldon van der Linde fifth, and then Wittmann sixth, Ankadea seventh, Rockefeller eighth, Auer ninth, and Muller battling just to get that one championship point in 10th place. What a great race. Fantastic stuff. Max Gotts was there in second when Calvin van der Linde had his problem, there to pick up his misfortune, and from there on in, he never looked back. And Liam Lawson doing a great job to keep Calvin van der Linde behind. Calvin fired up, as you can imagine, after that technical gremlin. There was that great sequence where Calvin was on the grass, on the kerbs, kicking up the dust, trying everything to get past the Ferrari, but he couldn't quite do it. And that turned out to be his best chance. So Calvin van der Linde will pick up 15 points instead of the 25 he thought he was going to get. Liam Lawson will pick up 18. And by my maths, the gap of the championship at the top of the table will just be four points after four races of the DTM. So there you go, another race where I'm looking forward to seeing Max Gortz getting out of the car because he's usually got a smile on his face anyway. And you can imagine just how overjoyed he's going to be. He might be a bit emotional about this as well. First couple of seasons indeed, you can imagine just how overjoyed he's going to be. He might be a bit emotional about this as well. First couple of seasons in DTM. He never had the most competitive car and the best he, he could muster was a fourth place finish in Moscow, but he's already picked up his first podium. He's now picked up his first win. So I've had wins for Liam Lawson, Calvin van der Linde, Philip Ellis and Max Gotts now. Four wins from four races. And that's what we want to see, a wide open competition as a neutral. Here, a replay of the moment that Max Gotts tucked the chequered flag all on his own to win by 4.6 seconds. We haven't heard from him yet. From his engineer, we heard on the team radio. I wonder if he's maybe a bit speechless, Max Gotts. He's got the slow down lap to gather his thoughts, get himself together and get the emotion, emotions in check, but they'll be released again as soon as he gets out of the car. Great shot, that. Reflected in the sunglasses. Cool stuff from Team HRT. Had a troubled day yesterday. Struggled in qualifying, I remember. After the pit stop, the wheel became detached. The uh, wheel nut became detached. He didn't finish the race yesterday, but motorsport is all about highs and lows. And today, thankfully for Max, was a real high. Uh, confirmation of the results. Got Lawson and van der Linde on the podium from Philip Ellis fourth, Sheldon van der Linde fifth, Marco Wittmann sixth, Daniel Hungadeus seventh, Mike Rockenfeller eighth, Lucas Auer and Nico Muller ninth and tenth. Alex Alban out of the points for the first time this season. Arjun Miney really thought he was going to get some points this weekend. So a pretty good drive to 12th place, but uh, he's shown very good speed this weekend. <laughs> Gives it a huge pat on the roof, the car. Almost caves the uh, metalwork in. That is one happy man. Absolutely chuffed with that. I'll go down as his, as his best win so far in his uh, career. And he's had plenty of them in various categories. <laughs> Helmet uh, about to come off. And uh, it's great to see Calvin van der Linde, ever the sportsman, who must be feeling gutted with the bad luck that he off. And uh, it's great to see Calvin van der Linde, ever the sportsman, who must be feeling gutted with the bad luck that he had. He's the first to go over and congratulate Max Gutz. Max will know, know there was some sort of issue because he was right behind it when it happened. But Kelvin van der Linde is still going to be your championship leader after the first two weekends. There's the replay. Yes, he says. Climbs up onto the roof. 
and he'll replay that moment, that shot in his head for years and years to come. And he won't want it to be the last time this happens either. Do you know what? I don't think it will be. Max got a delighted race winner then. And uh, there, everybody gathered round. And here he is, helmet off. Hey. Told you he'd be smiling. Didn't have to be a brain surgeon to work that one out, did you? So, <laughs> chuffed, absolutely chuffed. He's a bit calmer than I thought he would be, actually. I thought he'd be all over the place, but there's Liam Lawson. Well, job done in terms of points scored this weekend. He always wants to win. He's had three podiums out of four races, one win, two seconds and he is right up there in the championship. Crucially, keeping seconds, and he is right up there in the championship. Crucially, keeping Calvin van der Linde behind him. There you go. That's great sportsmanship. Big smile on the face. They enjoyed that. Racing hard, but full respect to each other. They really, really enjoyed that battle. I think Liam is really enjoying his time in the DTM. Ultimately, I think his focus is going to be on single-seaters and, a, from his point of view, hopefully a career path to Formula One. But you know, I'm very happy to have him with us in the DTM this year. So, championship. There you go. Oh, blimey, my maths was right for once. Four points. Kelvin van der Linde, 69. Liam Lawson, 65. Philip Ellis, 48 in third. Max got up to fourth now on 46 points. That's what a win can do. And Alex Albon, uh, who... Finished for the first time this season out of the points, fifth on 31 points in the championship. So, uh, rest of the finishers Alex Albon was 11th, Arjun Miney 12th, Timo Glock 13th, Vansom Avril 14th, Sophia Florsch uh, 15th. Be relieved just to get some laps in after the troubles that she had with the car yesterday and this morning. And then Esme Hawkey coming back from that horrible crash yesterday, 16th, Dev Gore 17th, Max Book with his drive through penalty 18th. And the one non-finisher was Esteban Mout, who picked up that right rear puncture in the race. So we're going to get ready for our top three drivers and winning team representative to be called up to the podium. And first to go is Kelvin van der Linde. Third place, not what he wanted, but it's more good points. And it just about keeps him in front in the championship from this man, Liam Lawson. Second place, another podium for the 19-year-old. And a terrific battle with Calvin van der Linde. Great to see them both uh, high-fiving each other as well, or fist-bumping at least, after enjoying that scrap. That's what racing's all about, isn't it? Hard but fair. Your winner, though, a wanted man. But fair. Your winner, though, a wanted man, is Max Gotts. <laughs> He's got a fan club here. He's a race winner, but the winning team that took him to that victory represented on the podium as well, Team HRT. They'll get the trophy, uh, the team's trophy on the right. And Max Gotts now is brought forward onto the top step of the podium. Congratulated by his rivals. Hugs from the team. And on to the top step of the DTM. So, with the trophies there, cap off. It's now time for the German national anthem. Hugely proud moment for Maximilian Gotz. The German national anthem plays here. The first German round of the 2021 championship. The 35-year-old 
from Oschenfurt in Bavaria is now about to hoist aloft the winner's trophy. He's given the nod, he picks up the trophy and he raises it above his head. Max Gotts, back in 2003, a Formula BMW champion as a youngster, then a GT Masters champion, a Blanc Pont Series champion and now a DTM race winner. And all three of the drivers on the podium, look, have taken a win so far this season now. Champagne time. Matt Scotts, he's aiming and far. Have taken a win so far this season now. Champagne time. Matt Scotts, he's aiming and firing, but he hasn't got splattered yet. I think he's got the best of Calvin and Liam on the podium there. In more ways than one. Face mask off, time for a swig. He's foamed up a bit, he's made a right mess of that. The suit's sticky, he won't care. He's a winner, job done. And that's motorsport in a nutshell. One day you're down, the next you're up. Sometimes it's the other way around and they're usually more downs than ups. But the highs more than make up for it. Max Gotts now adds his name to the list of championship contenders and race winners. What a season this is turning out to be. And there's plenty, plenty more where that came from. Next time out, we're going to head to Zolder on the 7th and 8th of August to Belgium in a couple of weeks' time for rounds five and six of the championship. And later in August to the Nürburgring. We've still got the Red Bull ring, Assen and Hockenheim to come as well on the calendar. Verena Oxy is getting ready. Uh, to catch up with uh, some of the drivers after the podium celebrations down there on the uh, track and down in front of the podium. So, Calvin van der Linde coming home in third place. Let's hear from Verena now, just in front of the podium. I've got Calvin here, who really did an amazing job in regards to what happened. You started in four, uh, and then you you were leading the pack, and then all of a sudden, what, your car just switched off? What happened? Yeah, that was actually what happened. The car turned off. Um, yeah, it's probably the, the biggest nightmare you have as a race driver, doing 250 and your car switches off. But uh, luckily, I had this, well, luckily or unluckily, I had this problem two weeks ago in another race, so I knew exactly what to do. Had to reset everything, and by that time, I lost two places. But still, lucky to still be on the podium. Had this problem two weeks ago in another race, so I knew exactly what to do. Had to reset everything, and by that time, I lost two places. But still, lucky to still be on the podium. It could have been a lot worse. So, Absolutely, and I think coming from P4 to P3 after that disaster is something you can be really proud of. And hopefully, will you guys be able to extinct that problem so you're not going to have that again, hopefully? We'll make sure of that, definitely. <laughs> Can't afford any more of those, but... Uh, no, we'll enjoy the podium. I think after P4 this morning, it's already a step forward. That's always a good thing. Still leading the championship, I believe. Not 100% yes. sure, but... Uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so going to enjoy that tonight, and then we see where we go. Absolutely. Thanks, All right, thank you so much, thank Kelvin. You. And now we're going to grab uh, Liam over there. Hopefully, we'll get him right here. Uh, obviously not. A lot of handshaking to do here, but I'll try my best. So, um, yeah, back to the commentator for the second, and I'll be right back. Thanks, Verena. Yeah, so Kelvin van der Linde explaining the situation from his point of view there. Not only do you have to be a very quick racing driver these days, you also have to be a software engineer having to reset the car. Uh, so his uh, loss was the gain for others. Let's hear from one of the drivers that gained from that now. I've got Liam Larson here, who did a really great job in the race, uh, especially uh, in the beginning. You did such a fantastic job. You did a really great job in the race, uh, especially uh, in the beginning. You did such a fantastic job leading the race even for a bit. But all in all, coming from P2 to P2, is that something you're um, OK with, you're happy with? I mean, it's uh, obviously with the way we're heading the car, I think it was a maximum today. I thought there was a bit at the start when I got the lead, I thought maybe we could uh, we could possibly win but um, I knew that the start was my only opportunity to get to get to it. Uh, we could possibly win but um, I knew that the start was my only opportunity to get to get to the lead I knew both me and Philip had all, all, all that extra weight so I tried once I got it done it was all good we had sort of control of the race unfortunately I stalled in the pit lane um, and that's where I lost the lead to, to Calvin so um, and from there on it was just a struggle I was lucky that Calvin had the issue uh, and then for about 20 laps I was just defending for my life so um, happy with the points it's uh, closed up the gap in the championship to I don't actually know what it is but it must be close now 
Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Liam. See you later. See you in Zolder. And I'm going to try to grab Max, see the winner who's still, yeah, um, handshaking and whatever they do when they win, obviously. <laughs> who's still, yeah, um, handshaking and whatever they do when they win, obviously. <laughs> and Mike just pulling him over. <laughs> so here he is, the winner. Maxi, congratulations. Your very first victory in DTM. You were fighting so hard in three seasons and now finally you managed. So how does it feel to yeah, finally win? Absolutely great. So um, I was uh, hoping that we are still able to fight uh, without having grades. So um, I was uh, hoping that we are still able to fight uh, without having uh, Kevin having this, this issue. Uh, but all doesn't matter. Um, now we are on top of the podium and uh, it's also for Hop Racing team the first uh, win in DTM. So I think the team is happy, I'm happy. And it's, it was really emotional on the, on the yeah, time when I crossed the finish line. I enjoyed every single moment and I was freaking out in the car. <laughs> and now I will freak out with this. <laughs> And so I will enjoy this um, and yeah, so <laughs> keep focusing for getting more points uh, during the year. Of course, and it's only the fourth race. So in other words, we have so much more time and anything from here obviously is uh, possible. So Maxi, looking at the DTM, the new era, I mean, you've been racing in the DTM for a while, but again, it's a new era and it's, if you ask me, absolutely spectacular. What is it like for you racing in this new series or rather in the DTM, but new era? Man, DTM is a big name and a big history and it's uh, for all of us we are, which are driving in DTM, it's, we have to be proud to be part of this and giving the fans, the spectators a great show all weekend. And uh, so it's really happy. And uh, of course, this uh, GT3 cars are a bit different to the old class one cars. And um, the pit stops are really exciting. And if you have tire degradation uh, on this track, it's not so high. But if you have tire deck like Monza, uh, you have also nice races in the end. So I think fighting racing here today, it was maybe a bit the end. So I think fighting racing here today, it was maybe a bit not as, as we expected. Um, especially in the midfield, I guess there was not many fights. And for me, um, it was quite an easy one, uh, driving in front and uh, win this. Absolutely. And coming from P3 to P1 is just fantastic. And uh, yeah, Maxi, so enjoy it. I'm sure you're going to finish that and probably tonight some more. I will. <laughs> All right. Thank enjoy. Guys. Thank you so much, Maxi. And back to the commentator. Thanks, Marina. That champagne's not going to last long at all, is it? Uh, yeah, in absolute fairness to Max, he was, remember, just starting to close the gap to Kelvin van der Linde before Kelvin had his, uh, his technical problems. So he would have been uh, definitely fighting for the win anyway, but he's uh, delighted with that. Moved up to fourth place in the championship standings after that race, featuring some great slow-mo shots here in the sunshine that we've all been blessed with here at the Lazitz Ring this weekend. It's been a fabulous uh, couple of days. The uh, action on track has been outstanding as well. Some great overtaking. That overtake from Liam Lawson and the similar overtake from Marco Wittmann into turn two were both uh, brilliant. And that's one of the new uh, marks of this new era of DTM. The overtaking is proper, real overtaking. There's no buttons to press. There's no DRS. There's no push to pass. It's all about drivers outwitting other drivers. And uh, that, as a purist, I think is what you want to see. So it's been a brilliant day. Uh, today it was a really good day yesterday as well and uh, the crowd here have enjoyed uh, having uh, the opportunity to watch the racing track side we've enjoyed having them here too we've enjoyed your company here with our coverage uh, from me chris hartley in the box it's goodbye until, Z until zolda in a couple of weeks time but let's hand back now to verena Thank you so much to our commentator. And yeah, indeed, it has been a spectacular weekend here at the Lausitzring. We enjoyed full sunshine and mostly importantly, we saw such amazing race action, really brilliant racing. And hopefully we're going to see something like that again in Zolda in just two weeks. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, take care and see you soon. Bye bye.